Philip just told me the origin story of the jack-o'-lantern. It is so interesting. I'm gonna ask him to say it again for you guys. Hey, babe, can you please come here? I'm gonna get ready, but can you please tell the story, the origin story of the jack-o'-lantern? Yeah. I just learned it this morning, so I might not remember it exactly, but it was an Irish folk tale. The story is about this guy named uh, Stingy, Stingy Jack who invited the devil to have a drink with him. The devil obliged, and Stingy Jack didn't want to pay for the drinks, so he asked the devil to turn himself into a coin so that Stingy Jack could use the coin, who was the devil, to pay for the drinks. So Stingy Jack didn't have any intention of uh, spending the money, he, so he put the coin that was the devil into his pocket, and in his pocket was like a silver crucifix. He basically trapped the devil because the devil couldn't turn back into the devil due to the presence of the crucifix. So he tripped him. Yeah, so he tripped him. Um, and he's like, just, just for a, just so that he could get the, some extra cash. Okay. Eventually, Stingy Jack let the devil go. And because the devil was pissed off, I think the devil was asking for his soul. And Stingy Jack said, how about this? How about in a year's time, if I'm still alive, you can come back and take me. And so the devil obliges, and a year goes by, and the devil returns. I'm actually a little shocked at how much the devil is obliging. I know, you'd think the devil... No, you think you'd like push back a little bit. You just take what, what, he, what he wanted. The devil comes back. Before the devil takes him down to hell, Singe Jack kind of tricks the devil again, I guess. They're like in front of a tree. He convinces the devil that the devil should climb the tree and like take a bite of the fruit up there. Which is kind of funny because... The devil's usually the one convincing people to take bites from fruit. <laughs> so this devil is acting dumb, yeah, dumb as hell. So before he can climb back down, Stingy Jack carves a cross in the bark of the trunk, which prevents the devil from coming back down. Stingy Jack says, and wait, and wasn't he there for like 10 years or something? Well, so he then says, if I let you down, I propose the same deal as before, but like instead of one year, it's gonna be 10 years. So if I let you down, you can have my soul, uh, but only if I'm alive in 10 years. The devil says, okay, that sounds good. And Stingy Jack probably like crosses out the cross and the devil comes down and disappears. Yeah, so I guess Stingy Jack dies before the 10 year anniversary. So technically speaking, like his soul is not owed to the devil because the deal was, if I have to attain why it's 10 years, then you can have me, but he dies before. Yeah, but the real tragic thing for Stingy Jack is God doesn't want him. He basically didn't think that, like, heaven was the kind of place that should have troublemakers like Stingy Jack. Yeah, so he sends him down to hell. The devil doesn't want him, but the devil doesn't want him, A, because... Pause. Can you imagine the devil not wanting you? Devil in the story seems to be kind of like a like a trickster. Yeah, not it, and not, like, evil incarnate. Imagine that. It's like, you are such... A freaking menace that the devil don't even want you, I know. Yes, yeah, bad. It's like, this is very much not the devil that's like portrayed in like, the exorcist. Yeah, so then the devil doesn't want him because he's a little bit pissed off for being tricked multiple times. I think it's funny, it's like, why wouldn't you want to punish him and keep him in hell? But whatever, so the devil is pissed off that he was tricked. And then technically speaking, he also is a man of his word. And so he's like, well, you know, like you died before 10 years elapsed. So like, even if I wanted you here, I would have to go and back on my word. Yeah. So I guess the devil's also honorable. He doesn't have a home in heaven or hell. Oh, I guess purgatory isn't an option for him. But um, anyway, the devil condemns him to wandering <laughs> the nights as that feels like purgatory kind of a, yeah. But I think it's on earth. I condemn the wandering the nights on earth as like a, a homeless spirit carrying a burning coal to light his path. Jack gets an idea to like hollow out a turnip and then he puts the coal in the turnip. And so Jack, the spirit wandering around at night was known as Jack of the Lantern. Okay, how freaking cool is that? Yeah. Jack of the Lantern, yeah. Jack the freaking menace of the lantern with a coal in a turnip. The Irish folk is given the Gaelic dialect and just the way Irish people talk. They shortened it to Jack-O-Lantern. I love it.
It's so cool. Yeah, and then they started carving turnips with scary faces. I don't know if, if the faces were supposed to resemble Doc's face or whether they were intended to scare Jack away. But either way, like, they started putting them in windowsills and on doorsteps and stuff. It's like a means of, like, protecting their domain. Irish people started coming to the United States, I think, in the 1800s. Um, due to the potato famine. Gourds, you know, pumpkins, primarily, were a much better canvas for these jack-o'-lanterns, and so they transitioned into using them instead of, uh, hollowed-out turnips. There you have it. Whoa! <laughs> the origin story of the jack-o'-lantern. Thanks, bam!